hello and thank you for um, clicking on my video and if you've been following my videos thank you very much I don't have a lot of subscribers but I am happy for every person that I have so um, I wanted to talk about um, the forced ascension process so you can force ascension and I, 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 I labeled the episode forced ascension because it is I'm looking over here but you're over here <laughs> um, it is in a sense um, forcing it in a way um, that you wouldn't normally have to force it, except for that right now the world is really heavy and materialistic, and um, our bodies are keeping us bound to um, this, this uh, Malkuth. So, in order for you to detach, um, detach that um, uh, anchor, I guess you could say, to this material realm, um, the first thing that um, you would need to do, I'm going to give you seven easy steps, um, but it's not necessarily forcing ascension, it's just really forcing all of the chemicals and um, metals and things that have been put in your body so that you don't wake up to keep you sleeping. So you have to purge your body of those things so that your um, your Christ consciousness can come alive. If you go and you read, um, okay, so no meat, first of all. You can't have any meat, um, especially pork, but really you can't you start with just no meat and remove the meat from your diet. Um, you have to do a three-day fast. Um, you have to do a three-day fast. Uh, the third or the fourth day is when you will get your first um, awakening experience. One of the chakras opens up. Um, there's a, a three-day fast, a seven-day fast, and um, you know you hear like the 39 or the 40 day. It's a 39-day fast, but um, on the 40th day is when Jeshua pulled out the. He calls it devil. Anyways, there's a tapeworm, but anyways, um, uh, so you need to do that, and then on every day. Um, of the fast, step, step three is every so we got no meat. Start with no meat. Just start taking the meat out of your diet, and um, you got to get that. Um, you are what you eat. So if you eat a cow, you're gonna be as dumb as a cow. So you have to. If you eat death, you're gonna be death. Okay. Don't eat dead animals. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat animals. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, when, when you get your Christ consciousness, you'll understand. Okay. So your step two is you're gonna have to fast, and you just start with just your three, three day fast just to start. And then the seven the seven day fast is like the, the real kicker. But um, so you do every day of your fast, morning and night, or just like whenever you can. You always just want to be in that constant state of Sabbath, and um, a constant state of the Lord's prayer. Just saying, you can say Abu Nishmea, which is my mother and father of cosmos, or you can say Our Father who art in heaven. Um, but to to do that um, is really important, and I prefer um, the Hebrew Aramaic version of it um it just uh, talks about like you know the universe and stuff like that so i like that version but you can just do the lord's prayer it does not matter the most important thing that you pray is your will be done not mine you have to surrender your um your will to the your um your ego to the throne i don't want to say your will because we have a free will we're not turning into slaves but uh, when i say your more what the archons did i'll get into that when i say surrender your um, your will be done, you know, not mine. I say, you know, um, you know, what your plan, not mine. Like your, you know, your vision, not my ego's vision. Not what I want. Not because I want earthly security and pleasure, but because you know, I am here to do a job. So um, everybody has to realize that everybody that's on this planet has a soul contract, and that every person that's incarnated on the planet right now are the best of the best on both sides best of the best on both sides. It's very hard to get on the planet right now because of abortion and because of the death rate being so high. But abortion mainly is actually stopping the reincarnation process in this cycle. This We have one life and it's a cycle of lives. It's really not supposed to be that way, but because there's something going on, we're, we're, we're being um, trapped. So um, the, the, um, that, that's, anyway, I'll just move on. Um, that, that'll be for different ones. So your will be done not mine, you know, on on earth as it is in heaven. It's really important that you say on earth as it is in heaven because there's a lot of power to certain um, phrases like as above, so below, um, on earth as it is in heaven. So um, it's really important that we all be invoking the Lord's Prayer and in, inviting heaven on earth. So, and um, the fourth thing that's really important that has been removed by the evildoers is the communing with the angels. Like you must commune with the angels. They are literally here to serve you. When you resist... When you resist the temptations of uh, the devil or Satan or whatever you want to call it, your hypothalamus, you can call it whatever you want, um, uh, then um, you are sent angels in that within that hour to serve you. And they're there to serve you. And um, that's one of the things that 
the evildoers they don't want you to know because they were once here to serve us. Um, well, not us, but I mean, they were once here to serve humans and uh, the sons of God, the, you know, humanity, and they did not want to. Um, and so now the big joke is that they've got humanity serving them when they're here to serve you. But all of the other ones that agreed to serve you are still here serving you, and they're just waiting, waiting for you to just listen to them and just watch and listen and allow them to work, allow the spirit to work in your life and allow your, um, your plan or destiny to unfold. So um, be in constant state of prayer, constant thought equals action, and you want to be able to use that, that manifestation. That's the, the power of the seven-day fast, too, is the seven is a manifestation. So um, communing with the angels is really important because it's something that was taken out of the Bible for us to commune with the angels, and it's important for us, too, because they are here to serve us. And um, as long as we keep our temples pure, that the Spirit of God can dwell within our bodies, the angels are here to serve us. Um, and, um, number five, I, you have to, um, you have to get in a level of compassion and servitude. This is not an elite position that people are stepping into in the ascension process. It is really a humble step to take and say, um, it's not, it's not easy either. It's not easy. It's really not. Um, especially since immediately when it happens to you, it's so real and people immediately want to tell you it's fake and you're like, wow, I mean, what I was doing before was fake and, and now this is real. You know, like Florence and the Machine says, all my stumbling praises never amounted to anything worth this feeling, this heaven. So um, that, you know, this, there's a there's a counterfeit and there's a real. And when you get the real, the people that have the counterfeit are gonna tell you that the real is not real because they're addicted to the counterfeit, okay? So, um, and when you've gotten the real, and you will have the compassion just to love them in their darkness when the Lord saw you and you were dark yet lovely when you were still maturing dark but lovely so that's what we need to understand is that compassion is that everybody's doing what they think is right everybody's doing most people are doing what they think is right and what they think is good and what they were told and what they were raised by their by their elders um elders and people like that told what to do so and there's a lot of dogma attached to these belief systems like hellfire and gnashing of teeth and um and just a lot of damnation um, attached to um, any doubt that you have and um, you know I would say like really be in Proverbs too during this time because there's a, a lot that you need to know in, in Proverbs and the Essene Gospels just talk very very specifically about fasting I'll go back to step step two which is the fasting which is um, really the most important thing um, and that is um, that you, know, you don't tell anybody about your fast. You don't tell anybody. It literally says like put makeup on, put an, o o anoint your hair and your face with oil so that you look normal and you, you fast before no man. Otherwise you have your reward, okay? You're, if, if you do it so the other man can praise you, then you have your reward. Um, but you can check in the Book of Mormon, in the Emerald Tablets of Toth, in the Dora Tour, in the Bible, in the Koran, three, seven, a 39 or 40 day fast. These are very important. You have to do them. If you look into Walter Beeth and had it, or, um, Walter Beef and uh, Total Onslaught Changing the Word, you will see that the fasting and the prayer they have taken out of the Bible, that they actually took it out many times so that you would just eat and your energy system and your um, Christ consciously clogged up and, and all your energy is trying to process food and you're so consumed with sugar and all this crazy stuff that you're putting in your body that it's unable to unlock your chakras or what's new age terminology, but really it's your Christ consciousness, your halo. So um, you... Um, you gotta, you gotta open up your chakras and allow that energy to, to flow, okay? So, um, communing with the angels, having that compassion for really setting people, people free. That's, we, we really need to have a compassion for, um, for reaching people and setting things, setting them free. You have to learn the tree of life so that you don't bounce around. Because if you get your Christ consciousness, you can go straight up. You can take, there's many different paths, okay? There are two paths you can go by. There's this one that's like, do, 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 and you learn, and you learn, and you learn. And then there's one that goes straight up the center to up. Now, that is what happened to me. But when I got into Ott's, the secret hidden Zephyroth, but when I got to Ott, I forgot. It was like an immediate amnesia. So it went and like slept down, and then I had to work my way back up, back up to it. And now it seems like when it goes back down, I can shoot straight back up, you know, to the center. So um, learn the Zephyroth. That's not on my step, but you have to learn the Tree of Life, the um, Enochian or Kabbalah, or the Essene. Tree of Life is the best, but the other ones have numbers and they have all the uh, Jewish stuff on them, so it's a little bit Hebrew, it's easier to understand. 
But so just understanding that you're stepping uh, out of this Christian elitist attitude and into an attitude of servitude and um, that you know, you're going to need to learn, you're going to need to read, you're going to need to listen, you're going to need to set aside your beliefs and get all the information and just dig your heels into the things that you know are real like God and Christ and remove everything else and just learn and find your common threads. And then, um, you know, forgiveness. When you meet your divine child, this can be very emotional. So when you meet your divine child, um, you find your soul, co your soul contract and oftentimes, like with me, I remember my conversation with their creator before I came my redemption, um, a, a, a lot of information, but um, but you also get all your memories back, and um, a lot of childhood memories. They call it the divine child for a reason, and sometimes, like with me, it happened where I got all my memories back, and I did. It's like it was like you knew and you remembered all that stuff, but your your compartmentalization blocks it out. It's traumatic, and so um, when I put all these things together, even though I understood why everything had to happen in my life the way it happened, and how it was so divinely orchestrated, I mean everything, it's one day I'll just go, I'm just going to talk through my whole life, like everything, but um, it was so divinely orchestrated that it was, um, it was beautiful, I understood everything, but when I, when I came, kind of came back from it, I kind of like, boop, I, I went into um, the, the father, and I had been over here with uh, the Saturn, the destroying mother, divine feminine, which is what I was born with. So I had to go over here and learn the male counterpart of it, which has been the last almost 10 years of my life. And, um, and when that happened, it was like all this, like, whew, oh my gosh, oh, you know, like everything. And, but then, um, I kind of started to get a little angry at the things that had been done to me and, and how I'd been treated. And, the things that had been said to me and the lies and um, the manipulation and the brainwashing and the physical um, abuse and and I was just so frustrated and um, that I immediately went boop 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 and I kind of bounced on even further than I was before when I started and I had to actually take steps fast and pray and um, do some astral work to get to a point where I understood the way things are the way they are right now but um, you know it's, you have to be careful of that because it's kind of like a pinball machine. The tree of life is like a pinball. You got to be real careful. You have to have to follow the law, the holy law. There is a holy law, you guys, a holy law, and you're only given a por small portion of it. And then you got this Jesus character that says, "Forget about the law," and um, you know, or, or most most people have this man of lawlessness in their mind that says, "This, this, I come to abolish this law. We don't bound by this law or whatever." And we have to understand we're still having painful childbirths and we still know good from bad. And so what was done in the garden cannot be undone. If you think that was done in the garden was undone by the by blood sacrifice, by human sacrifice and blood drinking, then you forgot to get your apple because you do not know right from wrong. Go go back and get your apple because you're going to have to go through this whole process all over again if you do not wake up and figure this out. You're going to have to... <laughs> I know Tila, Tila tried saying that this is um, Earth's final freedom from the fallen angelic Santa matrix. Um, and so I know she's saying that kind of stuff, but I just want you to consider um, that they always want you to think um, that, don't worry, it's over. They always are going to want you to think that. So um, you, if, if you do not have fear of the Lord, I mean, like, wisdom is fear of the Lord. When you understand, you fear, you fear God the way you felt your father when you were a child, but 10,000 times more, and you understand when your heavenly father, when the creator gives you a job, you do it. It doesn't matter what people from my church say. It doesn't matter that they're going to call CPS on me and try to say I'm abusing my daughter when they don't realize that my daughter's taller than I am. You know, it doesn't matter if they're going to call, you know, mental health services on me and try to have me taken away, you know, or they send someone over to try to get my husband on record saying that, like, I need help. And he's not going to say that about me. We, we're seeing things where things are happening in our lives. Our lives are changing. And why would you want me to go back to the way that I was before? I don't want to be that person before. I remember what it was like when I came down from the mountain when I first got saved. And I remember what it felt like when I never lost it. But it's back now. And it's back full force. And it's stronger than it was before. Why would you want me to go back to the way that I was before? All you people from church and you people, you Christians, coming at me and saying all this stuff about me. Why? Why would you do that to me? Why would you say that to me if I'm finally, finally understanding who I am and who I am in God and who Christ made me to be and who I am in Christ and everything 
and I know who other people are, and I'm only here to help and serve, why would you persecute me in such a way? I don't understand. I mean, I do understand it. I do. Because if somebody would have came to me and said, said these things to me a year ago, I would have immediately rejected all of it and just said, you are so messed up. You're, you are so messed up. Because my brainwashing was so heavy. Because I grew up in a Christian church. That's why I was chosen. Because I went to church six, seven days a week for a long time. You know, I was a counselor. when I, By the time I was 16, I was 15, 16 years old. 14, 15, 16, I was already a peer counselor in churches. I was already a drug and alcohol abuse counselor. I was already a dysfunctional family counselor. All this different stuff. So... I just, my, my discipleship training school started a long time. When people were going to the call when I was like 20, I'd already hopped the call when I was 13. I was, you know, 10 years ahead. Not because I was 10 years ahead, because I was just doing it. Not, it's just a big plan going on, and it's just unfolding. So um, nobody's more special than anybody else. There are some seriously special people walking the earth right now. Um, and they are, uh, they are the children. <laughs> the children, you know. Um, they're here, and um, I mean, like, really, they truly are um, our future. And most of the children that are incarnating on the planet right now are an angels. So, um, it's it's the uh, abortion is stopping reincarnation. Isn't that sick that they've got Christians not believing in reincarnation, reincarnation, but fighting against abortions? But the very very thing that they could fight it with is the truth of reincarnation. But because they've been forced not to believe in it, they can't fight abortion with what they need. What if you knew that you were stopping from your child from coming back? Or what if you knew that you were stopping, you know, your ancestor from coming back? You know, what if, you, I mean, but they've got all these women believing that, um, that's a whole different story, that, you know, they're killing babies and they're going to heaven. So you have to resist the need for food, step seven. You have to re resist your need for food. And the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, and many times in um, many gospels, many scriptures, your need for food is bondage of the soul. You must Free yourself of your need for food. It is bondage of the soul. That's what I mean about the energies keeping you um, from getting that Christ consciousness awakening, getting that, that halo. So um, that's it. I wrote something that said, always fear the Lord before. Oh, oh, that's what I want to say is that the, the fear of the Lord. Like I, yeah, I've always had a really healthy fear of the Lord for whatever reason since I was a child. Um, God spoke to me when I was eight years old for the first time. So um, and, and so and I always remember it. So, um, I have always understood my Heavenly Father, and I've always held God above um, the Jesus character that I always worshipped. I just knew. I have things happen where I pray. I pray, 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 pray to Jesus. And as soon as I pray to God, I mean, literally, I've had things manifest before my eyes. So, uh, people have seen things. So, I always knew that there was something going on there. Something's happening. And you, you worship the created instead of the creator. And Jesus himself, supposed to, you know, Christ himself said, so don't. Worship me, worship my father, and you have only one father, and he is in heaven. So, um, uh, I I believe that Christ was the father here. Don't get me wrong. Um, but son of God, no. God, yes. Um, but, um, uh, you know, what they, what they hide from you is that the wife of God, the female counterpart, also incarnates on the planet. So, and that's, uh, I can't tell you that now, because she would immediately reject it. 16 minutes. God bless you. <laughs>